Hi guys. So this is when I arrived back in Miami, the day after I arrived back. My pride and joy is back and uh, basically I had to uh, unwrap it, take all the straps off it, um, put all the side cases on, all that sort of crap and uh, get back on the road. So the process is basically first you've got to go to this office and get the paperwork all sorted out. Then you've got to go here. Uh, I'll put the links in the uh, in the uh, article. Then you've got to go here and then get hand in your paperwork, pay a, a fee, and it's got to be in cash. It was about eighty dollars. Uh, pay the eighty dollar fee, uh, and then then walk through the doors and they'll take you to this area here where you where you pick up your bike. It took me probably about thirty to forty five minutes to get everything back on the bike, get all the battery connected, uh, just check everything over, make sure nothing is broken or come loose, put all the side, put the side uh, back, uh, the top case on, um, and then right out of there. The guys were, were really good, they gave, gave me a hand, gave me all the things that I needed to cut all the stuff up, and I had a, I had a knife anyway. But um, yeah, the process is a little bit painful. When I went to the customs, you know, there was nobody there, so I had to wait there for about 30 minutes before somebody came. Uh, there's two, two places you've got to go. You've got to go to the customs place first to get your import uh, permit all organised, and then you've got to come here and get the paperwork processed, and they just put it into a computer, and away you go. But I had to wait here for about 15 minutes before I left as well. This guy, the guy here was from, uh, from South America, from from Argentina, I think. I think. Let's have a look at where, he, where he's telling me he's from. He was showing me where he's the town is. It might even be Colombia, actually. I was telling him that I visited his town. He's a really nice guy. So there it is, all ready to to roll off the grid. The climb gear I wore, the only thing that got worn was the pants just down the bottom. They were probably about an inch or two too long. And so they sort of frayed a little bit at the bottom, but you know, six months of coming off the bike a few times and uh, wearing it pretty much every, well, pretty much every second day over that period, uh, they were quite remarkable. And really good uh, weather, uh, weather protection if you get the right kind. You've got to get the waterproof. I guarantee it's better to get the waterproof um, um, it's, it's best to get the waterproof ones if you can, you know, the, the top of the range ones. It costs you like, might cost you like $1,400, but you don't have to go with the extra wet weather gear with you. The only thing I bought was a little wing sheeter coat, a wing sheeter jacket, a really light one that folds up basically in the palm of your hands. It's a really big one that can basically go down over your ass. That was just for the really heavy storm days. I did, probably wouldn't have needed it, but another added a benefit is it, um, it, you can, if you get the, you get an oversized one, you can get it to go over your gloves. Um, that's the only added benefit of that. Rather than having that gap between the gloves uh, and the thing, you just have it go all, all the way over. So I only had to wear that once or twice. I actually wore it in the really cold weather. I actually wore it underneath my climb gear just as a, a little bit of extra weed protection. Um, but this is coming back in Miami. That you can go on the, oh, I can't remember what it's called, the, the highway, I, it's, I hate it. Every freeway in, in Florida is a death trap for motorbike riders. Um, there's people who are just crazy, like six lanes, and they're really thin lanes as well. And people j jump from you know, two, three lanes across, just, just slide in front of you and it's just treacherous. So. I'd rather it take me an hour to get back than, than 30 minutes or 25 minutes and i just take the easy way, you know, not in any rush. It's just a smart thing to do. Um, I, I know that if I if I go on the, the freeway to the airport and if I did it enough, if I did it every day, I'd definitely be in a serious accident at some stage. Um, it's just it's just madness. Um, and, I, you know, they, 
you know, people go as fast as they can. I've had, I've had a car, I, was, I overtook a truck one day, and a car had come from three lanes across in front of the truck, didn't even look to see if anything was coming through, and just shot all the way across the road, right in front of me. And luckily, I sort of sensed that they were doing it, uh, and, and just saw them because they were speeding. As I went to overtake the truck, they were going faster than me on the left-hand side of the truck and they went past it, I just thought, just be careful, and I just eased off a bit. If I had, have been, if I had have kept the same speed up, he definitely would have hit me. Um, so I just avoid that. This is a bit of a pain in the back. So you can take this bridge, or you can take, um, you, you can take the, the Causeway Bridge, the Venetian Causeway Bridge, which costs you a dollar, but usually not as uh, high traffic. You can also, you know, if you want to um, jump between the traffic, you can do that um, uh, lane split. But you know, it's just not really worth it. But, you know, it's only going to be a couple of minutes earlier. So, and plus with all the side cases on, it's a pretty wide bike with everything on it. So, just a good time. But all in all, the bike. The only things I had problems with with the bike was the fuel pump, and that was not the bike's problem. Um, the rims, which weren't the bike problem, I had a pretty big accident on the Honduras El Salvador border. Um, like, not a, not with any other vehicle, just hit a massive pothole and just damaged both rims. Um, just came out of nowhere. Uh, and the tyres I had problems with, and that was associated with the rims. So that's pretty much the only issues I had with the bike. I'm going to do a top five thing, uh, top five uh, things I love about the KTM 1290, and the top the, the five things I dislike. There's nothing I really hate about it, but there are a few little things that are quite annoying. Um, and uh, I'll address those in a separate video. So this is the last of the series for this trip. I'm gonna have, I've got about a dozen 360 video ones I'm gonna put up, they're only short videos. There'll be no commentary on them. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'll, put, I'll put those up because some of them are pretty cool. I've got like a whole heap of them, but I, I won't use them all. And then I'm just going to do some post um, post reviews on all the tools I used, all the uh, equipment that I used, all the photography stuff, all the camping gear, everything. So there's probably about an extra 100 videos just there on all the stuff. And, and then I'm just going to uh, continue vlogging about bike, uh, about my bike and, and everything that I, that I do with that bike. So anyway guys, stay tuned. Uh, look forward to chatting to you, to you guys. This is just coming back home. Beach. So Miami Beach is about probably one kilometre right in front and straight ahead, the actual beach. I live about three blocks from the beach. Um, nice walking distance. And it's a great beach for swimming except summer because it's just like a hot bath in summer. But if you go out deep enough you can get some cooler water but uh, yeah, good, good bit of driving there. Just, just turn around just right there on the intersection. Really safe space, space spot to uh, turn around. It's just so stupid. Uh, let's get a park as well. This is the worst part of getting back to the beach. The, this, these traffic lights here hardly ever recognise a motorbike, so you always get stuck there. And mine's a heavy bike; it just doesn't. It just stays green the other way, so I basically have to just cheat across. You know, it's just so ridiculous. And you know, you try everything. You try going right next to the line because it's built by sen they're built on sensors. Uh, give it a bit of the beans. It's got amazing brakes. This bike, just you know, with the traction control uh, and all that. When when you actually brake, you can you've got to really just lean back a little bit because you can get thrown over. All right, thanks guys. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, thanks very much for watching the series.